My name is Aaron Monroe, and together with Save California Salmon, I'm on a mission to amplify and shed light on the voices of Black, Indigenous communities of color and their fight for environmental justice in California. We want to share and sow seeds of environmental leaders' guidance about protecting our waters and our wildlife. Join us as we uncover the issues that shape us as Californians and how these issues define us as a nation. We're at Sequoia Community Park in Eureka, ancestral land of the Wiat people. Thousands of years before European arrival, the Wiat named this place Jaro JJ, which means where you sit and rest. We're joined by scientist Lonix Landry, a STEM advisor at Cal Poly Humboldt, who's been educating and advocating for traditional ecological knowledge for decades right here in Humboldt. Yeah. Those ones aren't ripe. That one's not gonna give you a great experience. Mm. See that big red one? Okay, let me get my line. <laughs> get that one. So my grandfather, Carlton Landry, he left Louisiana on account of he said a, a black man can't be a man in the South. That was his, his kind of thing. I've heard him say many times in my childhood. And that's why I moved my family here. So he, he, the remnants, though, of, of the experiences, which were apparently for him much worse in the South, when he got here, he still had to live on the outskirts of town, but it was in a much better situation uh, for him and our, our future family than, than what it was um, back in the South. It's, I feel like it's a bit of a subtlety, but I feel like community bestows what you get to be. So being involved with um, Indian education, being involved with science education and seeing a need and continuing to step up and answer that need, uh, that's kind of how I grew into the role that I am. It's pretty hard to deny that you all need to come back, come back to this, come back to some indigenous understandings in order to move forward in a good way. You know, I view and many folks view, we are the stewards of this, of this landscape. So wilderness, that is neglect. And I think on so many levels, when you apply that to any place else, um, neglect is not an appropriate way to care for something. There have been many examples of things just going horribly wrong. I think our biggest one is the overarching um, climate change dynamic. This idea that profits exceed, um, exceed the values of, of people, exceed the values of flora and fauna, um, that has been catastrophic for us as a nation, as a world. Are there other practices that we have to look at and kind of alter, like prescribed burns, for example? Be just because the world has changed so much, how much of that wisdom is still relevant? It's absolutely still relevant. And perhaps it's also our mitigating way out. A prescribed burn is usually about fuel reduction. Right. And, and there's lots of positives that can happen with fuel reduction. But I, and, and cultural burns to me are for a specific outcome. And I right. think for a lot of our, our um, federal agencies and state agencies, I feel like what they're doing is more about fuel reduction mm. than making a specific species or, or host of species pop. So I would be playing in, in these little creek areas and I remember coming upon a giant Pacific salamander. And I haven't really seen any of those. Of course, I don't exactly traipse around the creeks and stuff like I did when I was a kid, but I haven't seen that since I was a child like a Pacific, giant Pacific salamander. Is there like a sadness to that, do you think, or? 
yeah, you know, our landscapes aren't supporting what they, what they used to. And so, yeah, that's, that's sad. And it's also, I guess, in a way, a call to action. How do you think that plays out for the youth, for the native youth here? I mean, when they, they're growing up and they're coming up and they're learning from people like you in the community and you have to explain to them that this thing that you experienced as a child is no longer accessible to them. It can be heavy. Right. We've been spending our time in survival mode. Right. Just trying to get by. Just trying to get by. Just trying to survive. Um, and when you are looking at your feet for your next step, you can't look down the road into the future, you know, thinking seven generations and whatnot. So yes, those are some, some remnant and important philosophies that we, we are relearning and understanding and bringing back, but it's kind of unrealistic to expect the majority of your indigenous people are gonna just automatically have all that. Um, we still got to meet people where they're at. What can just a regular individual do, like you or like me, to, to help in the assist for making effective change? I like the approach of, of let's target the big monopolies that control our world. Mm -hmm. We moved away from a fibrous material that would break down into all kinds of examples of, of natural fibers that will break down over time on account of, um, was it DuPont yeah. or Dole who, DuPont yeah, who, so. and their nylon, right. pushing their agenda of nylon. And now look where we're at, where we got plastics all over the globe. It's des destroying food webs that will eventually impact us, already is. We need to get at that. How in your view can black and indigenous people of color work together to find solutions to the same environmental problem? We need to recognize that when there is black lives movement, that doesn't mean it excludes the native experience. Um, when there's when there's native uh, centric uh, activities and movements, that doesn't mean that it excludes black folks and, and the rest of humanity. All lives matter. And all lives don't matter until black lives matter. All lives don't matter until indigenous lives matter as well. We have to flip the script. We have to flip the script and we have to place people, flora and fauna before profits. It's not the most important thing because we're killing ourselves we're killing our planet at least momentarily the planet will probably be fine right but for our ability to exist on it that's what we're threatening tell you not a very pleasant story running around the woods as a kid oh no i gotta go to the bathroom <laughs> one of my cousins just use the leaf, uh -huh. use the leaf. those spores on your bottom oh, good. that's no fun man <laughs> that's an itchy mess and it's not the best material i no. should have went for the thimbleberry <laughs> no the thimbleberry would have been a little more charmony <laughs>